We've been talking about this news a lot today. Sheldon Keefe has got to find himself uh, a new staff member because Dave Haxtell has been in town working with the Maple Leafs for a couple of years, and that will no longer be the case because uh, we've been waiting for this for a while. Who's going to get the job in Seattle? Turns out the answer is Dave Haxtell. He's the new head coach, the first head coach in Seattle Kraken history, and he's kind enough to join us now. Congrats, Dave. This is awesome. Uh, how did this all come about? We we had not heard your name connected to the team. Obviously, you've been going through the process, but how long were uh, yeah. you and Ron Francis kicking tires, and, and how cool is this uh, experience going to be for you? Uh, hey, guys. Thanks thanks for having me on. Yeah, it's been, a, uh, it's been an awesome day. It's been, uh, been a pretty cool day to go through. Uh, my wife and my son is out here. My, uh, my daughter wasn't able to join us, but been a, been a great 24 hours here um yeah we've you know we've had great communication really you know beginning i guess about a year ago um and then obviously as our as our season uh came to a to an end a few weeks back uh and, and ron got going with uh, with his interview process we you know we picked up the communication at that time we were talking about the, you know, back in the day, expansion team, no pressure. After what Vegas went through, going to the finals in year one, how are you thinking? What are you thinking going into this? It's almost like you're almost like one yeah. of the spotlight coaches, although you're an expansion team. If there's like a top 10 list of the beginning of the season, it's like you're under the gun already. How excited are you about that challenge? Yeah, no, it's, you know, what it's uh it is. It's a. It's a heck of a challenge, but it. You know, you can. You, you can equal that with with the opportunity. Um, you know, just being being able to really see uh, everything that's been put together here in Seattle is is unbelievable. I had a chance to you know to come out and see it firsthand uh, a few days ago, and then being back today. Just you know, in terms of the foundation that uh, from the ownership group. Uh, through through Todd and through Ron, everything that's been you know put together in terms of facilities and everything that goes with it, uh, in terms of staff and personnel, is uh, is pretty amazing. So uh, there's there's a big challenge ahead of us and a lot of work to do, but uh, but it's an unbelievable opportunity here in Seattle. Well, and what's amazing about this is you guys have the infrastructure, but you don't have a team. Like you literally don't have players yet. So I can't imagine what this interview experience would be like and i hope you can inform us and and keep us up to date on this because i'm sure when you went to philly the question was how do you get Giroux going you know how do you get voracek going what do you do with wayne simmons there's there's no players so how do you how did you go through this interview without (laughs) the ability to pinpoint certain players and certain structures that you want to implement knowing that the players will not be here for another month uh well i mean you're you're accurate right we'll we'll, uh we'll start to uh, you know, fill in the the names in terms of the players here with the expansion draft coming up. But you know, just a lot of just a lot of talk in terms of you know uh, overall philosophy and um, probably just you know also an extension of uh, some of the time that you know I had a chance to spend together with Ron during the World Championships a couple of summers ago. Um, you know, we were both with Team Canada at the time and got to know each other well there. So um, you know, as you go through the interview process and. Not only with Ron, but others, others in the organization. Um, just, just a great opportunity to, you know, to talk, you know, talk specifics of hockey, talk some philosophy, and really, you know, just, you know, individually and personally get to know each other. Uh, I think two things. It's pretty cool that they announced that they show you getting off a private jet to a, a, a personal car. That's kind of neat. I don't yeah. know if that's uh, in your wheelhouse every day, but that's something cool. But yeah. I, I, I thought I read. <laughs> sorry, go ahead. You don't go to work every day that way? Noodles does. Yeah, no, all no, night we no. grind. We take yeah. cabs and we walk. Noodles exactly. is five star. I don't know about that. But, I, but, I just, uh, all I'm going to say, and I won't take up, I won't waste too much of the time, but um, the one that was on top of the world was my uh, my 13 year old son Brendan, and he, he really got one up on his uh, his 15 year old sister this time because she wasn't able to come out. <laughs> that, would that would do that, it. That would do it. Yeah. I, Actually, the follow-up, though, I, I, I read your comments today about something that uh, I think is, is closer to your coaching style, and you said, you know, work ethic is kind of non-negotiable. Is that something that you're going to try and put that stamp on your team right away with? Yeah, that's that's a part of it, and, you know, I think it goes without saying all you have to do is, you know, you watch the teams that are, that are playing, uh, you know, still playing tonight and playing tomorrow night. 
Uh, I mean, that's that's inherent in the game, right? In in terms of giving yourself a chance every day to build towards being successful in the playoffs. I mean, I think that's a non-negotiable staple of, of any successful team. There's obviously a lot more that goes into it. And, um, you know, along with that, along with that work ethic, I hope there's a whole lot of fun that comes with it, uh, but competing together and working together, and, um, you know, and, and being on the same page, uh, you know, in order to win games is a lot of fun, but it's, it starts with a basic work ethic. Dave, we haven't heard your voice in two years. You've been here in Toronto. Uh, I don't know the reasoning for not having the assistant coaches not speak to anybody. I don't. I, I, I think it's stupid, to be quite honest with you. Is that something that you will carry on with you to Seattle? You're going to – Ron say it or you're going to say it, guys. No one else is speaking. I'll be the voice of this team. Can you take us through the philosophy of not having assistants yeah. speak, and will you carry on with that in Seattle? Well, I'll be honest with you. I guess that's not. We haven't had the conversation about that. And you know, I, in terms of, I guess it's not a philosophy that you know that I've ever talked about with you know with uh, with Kyle in Toronto or with Sheldon or with Mike. Um, but you know, in terms of having one voice speaking for for the organization, um, I you know I think that you know there is some sense to that. Um, you know, just organizationally having one voice uh, delivering. You know the message from from the organization. I think that's the thought process in terms of how we handle things here. Um, you know, on a day to day basis, obviously the head coach is is in front of the media an awful lot. Um, I do think there's a time and a place uh, for uh, you know for others to uh, have the opportunity also to uh, you know to speak. But we haven't talked about it here. Um, you know, that's that's one of the details that I'm sure we'll get into as we start building our staff over the next couple of weeks as well. But uh, there's a lot of great, uh, great hockey minds and, you know, in the national hockey league and everybody has their own approach in terms of how they want to handle media. It's, it's such an important part of what we do. Um, so, uh, you know, everybody chooses their own pathway. Chatting with Dave Haxtell has been announced as the uh, first head coach in Seattle crack in history. Again, had been on the staff here in Toronto for the past couple of years and, now that you're not in Toronto anymore, you can speak about them and you're allowed to do that. Uh, it felt like from the outside, it was just shock that you guys lost to Montreal. Like up 3-1, the confidence was there. You felt great about your team. Everyone felt great. Is that an appropriate way of phrasing it and defining it? Just shock throughout the room, shock throughout the system. You couldn't believe that the series got away and that Montreal actually won in seven. Well, I, you know, I don't know if the word, I, you know, I, I don't know if I'd use the word shock. It was, you know, extremely disappointing for us all. Um, you know, we had expectations of, uh, you know, of, uh, you know, doing some good things. And, um, you know, that playoff series was, you know, as you look to game five, obviously uh, in a great spot. And, uh, and, you know, a seven game playoff series happens awful quick. And, you know, through, through some of the critical points, um, you know, game five, game six, uh, and through game seven, um, you know, they were able to push the game their direction. So, you know, there's a ton of growing pains. Um, it, it's, it's, you know, it's painful. They're called growing pains for a reason. Um, but what I will say, that's, that's a tremendous group uh, inside of that dressing room. And, you know, I've, you know, I watched and, you know, listened to the media, you know, and how our, our players and everybody handled things. You know, um, not my place to to speak uh, much more than that. But I'll tell you, there's there's some great people uh, and very competitive uh, players in that dressing room. And you know, their the, their day is going to come. Uh, that much I know. And uh, you know, I'll be uh, I'll be a big fan for a lot of those guys in that dressing room because there's some tremendous human beings in that room. Well, uh, you know, I get the impression, like, obviously you're a believer. You've been there. You know it. You've been behind the scenes in terms of what they have and the clutch gene, et cetera. On the outside, it's tough to, to see it because they haven't been able to do it. How does that apply to the expansion draft, where I'm sure you will have a voice in this? I don't know if you're a believer in the clutch gene or not, but how do you scout for it? How do you find it? Because everyone wants it. Whether you believe it or not, you want a guy who can get the job done in the biggest moments. How, how do yourself and Ron Francis and others, when you get to the expansion draft, look for those intangibles and how much weight do you put into it in terms of picking your team? Yeah, well, those, you know, those will be things, you know, within the expansion draft, obviously Ron and, and uh, 
phase staff uh, will be handling most of those decisions. I, you know, I'm certainly going to have uh, input when asked for it. You know, you talk about the intangibles and and the gene. Um, you know, it partial, you know, partially maybe uh, with within uh, an individual's gene pool, but also, you know, it, it develops and grows with experience and confidence and knowing how to to learn and get it done. And um, you know, sometimes your you know your your biggest uh, learning tool and uh, the factor that pushes you forward is. Uh, is failure along the way and we've all had that and you know the real key is to be able to apply that in the right way and make sure you come back and uh, do it a little bit better next time and uh, you know speaking in general terms uh, you know with a lot of things in life I think that's the case but I know the group in that dressing room will uh, will do that and uh, you know I think in general within the game um, you know you're you're gonna stub your toe uh, along the way and it's hard um, but you come back better for it and, uh, you know, and eventually you stay with it and, and, and you know, the payoff is going to be there. Well, we wish you nothing but success in, in Seattle. It's uh, going to be fun to see the next couple of months when you guys really dig in and, and actually, you know, pick the team, develop the team and see where it takes you. So best of luck with it, Dave. Uh, really appreciate you taking time for us Thank today. You. We'll do this again down the road. Yeah, thanks for having me on today. I appreciate it. I'd love to come back on. You got it.